Hey, it's John Workington and Paul Daniels. Hi. We're at White Hart behind Michael's camera. We're going live on Facebook and we're doing the Fuji GFX versus the Hasselblad X1D. It's a head-to-head -head photo shoot. We're going to be shooting cocktails. So we gave you a little bit of a uh, preview taste of what we were up to earlier, but unfortunately we had a bit of an audio problem. So I want to give a little bit more of an introduction as to what we're up to. Uh, please, in the comments, if you're watching live, let us know how we're doing with sound and video. We're running a dual camera system. I've got Harry on a 5D Mark IV who's uh, doing the tight shots. Harry's right over there. I've got David over here running the television switcher. We've got a whole bunch of black magic devices. Uh, we've got their ATM TV studio, we've got the Hyperdeck Mini doing a hardware recording of this, and we've got the Blackmagic Web Presenter, which is taking care of making the stream ready to be streamed out to Facebook. So uh, everything's all uh, hunky-dory there, and uh, we are now broadcasting. So today's mission is a little bit of fun with medium format mirrorless. So I've got the Fuji GFX 50 in my hand. Is it 50S is what yeah, it's 50S, called? 50S. Yeah. 50S. We've got some pro photo flashes. We've got a hard light source way over to the other side here. Don't worry about showing that. We've got a soft box over here. So we're gonna give some soft light on the front of our cocktails. I, I, maybe I didn't say that, we're shooting cocktails. Uh, we've got hard light sort of rim lighting the background. We're gonna work with a relatively low depth of field. We've got both cameras actually at ISO 400 for this. We're gonna be predominantly working at about f5.6. We'll play around with shutter speed a little wee bit as we blend ambient light with our artificial light with the Pro Photo Kit. It's um, dark in here, really. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see how we go. And uh, we're going to just have a little bit of fun with these cocktails. Uh, unfortunately, we're working, so we can't be drinking them, but uh, somebody oh, really? else will enjoy no, them. I'm pretty sure we can. Oh, we can. Oh, oh good, okay. good. Yeah, we yeah. can. <laughs> this will make it much more interesting yes. as we go along. And of course, I, I've got to tell you all about where we're at. We're at Whiteheart Bar, which is a sort of funky, built around steel structure and shipping container. Really industrial, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a great industrial vibe. It's got some greenery. It's got an amazing drinks menu of craft beers. Uh, we've got cocktails. Uh, Justin is probably around here somewhere. Taylor's right behind me. Here's Taylor. He's working on the winter list, uh, the winter cocktail list, because it's uh, winter in Melbourne. So we, uh, we're going to have some drinks that will uh, warm you up. And as I was saying in an earlier video, which uh, you might not have been able to hear thanks to the audio, uh, we highly recommend you come to Whiteheart, because it's right beside Michael's camera. It's in our old parking lot, as a matter of fact and uh, get yourself primed with a winter cocktail, get yourself into the buying mood, and come on over and have a play with these objects of desire. Yes. These are very, very beautiful cameras. Uh, I'm holding the GFX 50S, and I've got the 120 mil. It's about a 90 mil effective, I believe, that's in 35 correct. mil yeah. terms. Yeah, right. And um, so this is the macro lens, which is image stabilized. Now, I know this looks like a real chunky thing in my hand, but it's not that heavy and it feels good. We've got the optional uh, vertical grip here, We've got the lens hood mounted. This is the flash controller for the Profoto kit, and uh, we're basically ready to roll with this. We've already tested things out, we're good. Now, Paul, give me a little rundown of what you're okay. running with the well, Hasselblad. Here is the, actually far more beautiful. It um, is, it is, Hasselblad very beautiful. X1D. And um, with, equipped with the 90mm lens, which is actually the equivalent of 75mm in full frame. Zone. Mm -hmm. So slight disparate uh, in the focal lengths here, but you know, we'll make up for it, should be fine. And once you've uh, finished playing with that, I'll have a go with this, yeah. and we'll uh, see what the results are like. So our plan is, as every cocktail comes out, we'll grab a few shots with uh, whichever camera's got the flash mounted, and then we'll quickly move the trigger over to the other camera, and we'll try to rinse and repeat. Yep. And uh, we'll keep these cocktails coming. We can play with a couple different setups, but we've got everything at the bar here all sort of ready. We've got uh, lots of props. And uh, we'll sort of work with what we've got and uh, run through. The bar's about to open soon, too, so we might have customers showing up. But uh, we'll uh, hopefully not delay everybody too long. So let's get rolling here. We're ready okay. for uh, our first drink here. Okay. So you, I'm going uh, to run a little bit with, uh, with the Fuji. So I might as well just, uh, while we're out of here, I'll see what we can get. So I'll start with a mezcal cherry ginger cell. Obviously coming into winter, Darker, darker. I might as well use the vertical grip while I'm at it here. Keep it 
Now, Paul, if you want to just grab our spare documentary camera shoot, that, that should just be an aperture priority and shoot a couple documentary stills as anything is rolling. So that's not going to need any flash. I'm just hoping that we've got enough light here with the spill to get a couple of shots as we sort of go. Well, that's not too bad. That's good. So once we get this drink ready to roll, we'll get it into position basically over here. And I'll try to have a little play with some background elements and we'll see what we've got. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so as Taylor's saying, he's got some ginger syrup here. And a cherry herring, which is a dark cherry liqueur. Oh, a cherry liqueur. That sounds really good. That'll, that'll warm you up for winter. <laughs> yeah, that, with the, uh, that with the cherry. Let's get a that shot of this one. shot glass here. Okay. And then uh, mezcal, which is like a smoky, sort of uh, smoked sweet uh, style of tequila. Or at least... Um, Similar to tequila. And then egg one. Whoa, egg. How exciting. Nice and fluffy, mainly for, mainly for texture. Okay. Now, I'll just get you, I, I know you don't want to yell or anything, but I'm wearing the mic, unfortunately, oh, Taylor, so no, if, you, no if you yell up, you Project. might come through. Yeah, no problem. Project, exactly. So we, uh, do a dry shake first. Mm -hmm. Gets that egg white, uh, reacts with the lemon juice, gets it nice and fluffy. That's a bit of a workout there, Taylor. Uh, gets, you, gets you looking good. Well, you know, looking better than I would otherwise. Ah, oh, you're looking good. How many of those can you do in an hour is the question. Fatsu. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> How are we doing on viewers, guys? We got uh, a few people into the stream. 11. 11. 11 people are watching you live, Taylor. How good is that? Hello, people. Just temporarily, just bring this in a little bit over this way. Now, as I'm running with the uh, GFX here, I might just want to make a little bit of a quick note. Um, as I'm shooting, I don't have auto review on, and I'm not 100% certain how to get auto review on. Have you, uh, is, is there a way? Uh, to have it automatically pop up so you can chimp after you've shot? Um, yeah, absolutely there is, but I've just got a sense that you, you, can, you have a choice of actually making the review when you want to. Mm -hmm. so just hit the play button. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, look at that, okay. Yeah, look at that. I think we've got a drink ready to shoot here. I'm going to, now I'm going to place this over here. It'll be, it'll be fun. Okay. I want to just have a little bit of fun with this and this. I've got that in the so background. A bit of caramelized ginger. Now, I'm going to try to get myself right in tight here. I don't want to block my light too much. Oh, let's get back out of play here. There we go. Now, keep in mind, I'm shooting with a fixed focal length lens here, so I've got a frame with my body. Okay. I've got a couple shots. I'm just going to get Paul to come in here with the Fuji for a sec. Oh, just bring, you can just sit that one down over here, Paul. That's fine. I'm going to shoot a horizontal one first here. Now, focus is working quite well here. I'm happy. I'll look at you to shoot a few here. Let me grab okay, that. You that. Okay, So as you can see, the grip on the Fuji is a little bit uh, different than a lot of the grips you're used to on the, uh, on the, the big brand SLRs, digital SLRs, in that uh, your shutter is not at the top. It's kind of midway through. It's very comfortable in the hand. And ergonomically, that's really nice to rest your thumb against. Mm -hmm. so it, sits, it takes all the weight into the air. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to raise this light up just a little wee bit more so we're not blocking it with our bodies. Yeah, that's what I was and then I'll just angle it down a bit. 
There we go. And I'll get it in right tight here. I'm just going to move these chairs. Okay. So how are we looking there? We might be able to show the back of the screen uh, if we show it, get her over to the frame here so Harry can see. So we're just working with that. Yeah, that's good. Now, what if you can see if you can get it framed with a little bit of that strobe right into your uh, into the background here. Keep in mind we've got the strobe way over there. How's that? Are you able to show on the back of that? Oh, well, that's good. Okay. Okay. So keep in mind now it's a fairly long focal length lens. It's equivalent in uh, 35 mil terms is about 90 mil. So just tuck in tight here. See if you yep. can get a little bit of the actual flash into the frame. That's what I want to sort of see how that works with this because that was a uh, when I shot the original uh, shoot here about two months ago, I was using uh, Canon equipment and I was shooting, it was, it was obviously at nighttime and I was shooting wider open, but I, I was having a lot of fun with the Canon lenses at the time, placing the flash into the frame and thus getting a little bit of lens flare and whatever. Okay. It's a bit hot still. I think I'll yeah. turn this one down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll hand that back to you. For yeah, I'm just going to change my drink position a little wee bit here. I want to just get looking right up that little... Uh, swizzle stick here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get this in the background a little wee bit more here, just like a little bit of color. And let's see what we've got. There we go. I'm gonna get back as far as I can here. There we go. Let's get back as far as I can here. Okay. Oh, I like that. Now I've got a little bit of the yeah. flash in my shot here. I just got to make sure I'm in focus. And the front light's okay now? Front light's fine. Good. Yeah, yeah. Now one thing I might add, these are mirrorless cameras. I can get my review in my viewfinder, which is quite exciting. Yeah, that's very useful, isn't Okay, now I've, I'm a little bit crooked on that, but I've got a bit of flair in there, and I'm kind of liking what I've got. Yeah, nice. Have a little bit of a play here. Now, how are you going, Taylor, on your next drink? Uh, if, you, if you're ready for me to stop. Yeah, get, get, get rolling. That's good. We don't want to delay anything here. Okay. What do you say you swap the flash over to the Hasselblad, Paul? Yeah. We'll still play with that, and we can change the, uh, the framing a little wee bit if we need to. Okay, that's good. I'll just go put this over to here. Mm. Yeah. I'm just going to go move the backlight so we can get it a little bit more in the frame. Yeah, perfect. I might just bring her down just a little wee bit here too. See how this goes. Now, hopefully, I haven't changed the intensity too much, but I've just brought the backlight in a little wee bit here so that we can have a little bit more in the frame. Oh, you had a filter on there, did you? Okay. Oh, there we go. So now we've got basically the same identical settings with the, oh, you've got your uh, battery doors open there. Oh, that's handy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Interesting, it gives you quite a different look. Okay, yeah. It's actually a um, much flatter looking image on the, on the back. On the back. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, we've got raw files on these, so we'll have a uh, lost flavor. Actually, as a matter of fact, I didn't actually, I didn't confirm we had a raw file set on oh, the no, I've but I'm sure we did. Oh, you said, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, you did a reset. Yeah. So yeah, we should be good to go. So okay. If you, um, I'll just show you that view. You can see that the um, LCD on the um, Hasselblad, is, the L LCD on the Hasselblad is a um, much flatter looking, ah, uh, uh, that'd be helpful, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Much flatter looking image than the one you're getting off the, um, off the Fuji. Mm -hmm. A little bit more realistic, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to pop this guy over here. 
and we'll get ready for the next one. So Taylor, what is our next drink that you're getting uh, prepared here? Now, uh, the next guy is a lychee mint and rhubarb pieble. Okay. Uh, so we're using uh, mint, gin, uh, lychee and lime juice, and then topping it with uh, crushed ice and rhubarb bitters. Okay. I'm just going to grab the documentary camera and take a couple just stills as you're doing that as well. We're sort of cheating here. We've got a, another Canon camera just to take some uh, run-of-the-mill stills as we're... Uh, as we're shooting, just to get the whole process all denoted here. Okay, we got some ice there. That'll do up. I just want to make sure I get a little shot here. Give it a go. See whether we've got enough spillage just to get anything half decent illuminated just in this setting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just rotate the softbox over just to give you a little bit more. There you go. I should give you a little bit of light. Even if we underexpose a few of these things, these files of the medium format cameras are, um, there's an awful lot of latitude in a medium format file. So as, um, if you underexpose, even at ISO 400 where we're working at, there's an awful lot you can do in post-production with these files. So we're not that concerned as we sort of move around in mixed lighting. It's just a matter of getting these drinks out here and getting some, getting some information in the camera because we can do a little bit of magic in post-production. As a matter of fact, we can do a lot of magic in post-production. So we're just sort of working with what we've got here. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me just um, give you an idea of what that looks like. Okay, that's good. Okay then. So what I might want to do here is, uh, oops, let's get that out of the way here. That, okay. Might just change a little bit of my background colors for this one. Let's get these guys out of the way here. Like any other, any other looks or flavors? Let it, let it run out. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do with this guy. I'll get your light changed around for you, Paul. Thank you. So, there we go. That should give you a bit. Now, we've got a bit of ice on this one. If we maybe move this out, we should be able to get a little bit of a path straight through. Yeah, we should have a little bit of light coming right through on the ice here. It's actually darkened off a little bit. I still think it's a little bit hot. So. Okay. So now with the Hasselblad, Paul's running just a little bit wider. That's a 90 mil lens, so its effective focal length is probably around, what, the 75, 75. range, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind that. What do you think? Well, that's kind of cool, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've got a nice line leading off yeah. there, and I like the way that... that yeah. uh, I'm sorry we're describing something yeah. that we can't really see. If we turn the camera around a little bit, maybe we'll be able to see this. We've got a little uh, nice hot line along the uh, galvanized steel bar. So uh, we've got a few things that we can look at. Okay. Good. Now, you know what I might like? You've got a white heart menu by chance handy? I might want to just put one up prop. There. No, okay. Uh, I just like these. I like this. I'm just going to move this into the foreground here. Just like that. Maybe just quickly throw the uh, trigger onto the Fuji. Let me just leave the scene for a sec here. That's looking nice, Johnny. Yeah. That backlight, that line works well off there. I'm just going to grab the trigger here. Let's just grab the trigger, though, so I can continue shooting. Good cocktail. Yeah, sure. No, I don't. I don't have any heat. See what you can do. If you just flip yourself into an auto exposure mode, you might be able to do something with that other cocktail in natural light a little wee bit. And I'll shoot this a bit, and then we'll go back. Oh, this is going to be nice here. Yeah, okay. Turn that flash back on. Are you on? Yeah, good. Should be. Yeah. Okay. Let's get a view. Okay, here we are. Now, the life of the uh, product photographer at the bar quite often is a little bit of the life of a contortionist. So, as we're working here, let's just see how we're coming up. Ah, that's quite nice. I like that. Let me just get this into the background element here. Napkins. Let me get this out here in the edge. I think I want to get a little bit of red in the background there. 
So I'm just sort of playing with uh, what I've got here for props, knowing that I'm sort of shooting into that light. So I'll get back as far as I can. I might just move this light. See if we can pull them back a little, get bit. Back a little bit. Yeah, get them back just a bit more. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Take one more shot, John. Okay. Now I just want to stop the lens down just a little bit. Okay. Just because, um, where are we? Try that. This okay. Just a bit harder. Okay. Now, when I'm focusing, I'm basically working with the garnish is the main sort of topic for these drinks. We've got the straws here. Now, let's see what we've got. There we go. Now, I could possibly, I don't know if you can see this, Harry, but I, I'm going to try to level myself up a little bit. But that's kind of the look I'm getting. got this light coming through. Most likely in post-production, we'll warm these files up a little bit, make them look in you know, sort of a winter tone. But I think we've got the raw capture here. I could be a little bit more level with my... Uh, my uh, framing, but again, as I said, it's the life of a contortionist. I'm just going to move the fruit basket back a little bit so I can get a little bit more light coming through here. And I'm going to try to nail this one one more time. And then I might let Paul just sort of see if he can repeat with a little slightly different look with the Hasselblad. I'll tell you, they're looking very nice in the viewfinder. And I'll just frame it horizontal as well. Pulling back about as far as I can here. Having no problems at all with the autofocus, working brilliantly. Good, very hot, very good exposure here. I got all everything I need. We'll just sort of show back here. I don't know if Harry, if you can bring that in on the camera there. But that's what we're capturing. We've got lots of color, got, uh, got basically what we need to do here. I'm not too sure. Is that focusing for you? Don't worry about talking here. You can talk. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Harry talks. That's good. Well done. Hi, y'all. <laughs> well done. Okay, I'm just going to pass the uh, flash back yeah. to uh, Paul here. There we go. You trigger up. There we go. You can shoot a few of those. Now, what I'd like to do here, so that's that. I'm just going to quickly put myself up to about 3,200 here, just to see how ambient's working with this. Yeah, well, that's not too bad. Yeah. 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 yeah, you go ahead. You work with the flashes. I'm just going to move this filter out of the way. So if I, if I just uh, rotate between 3,200 and... Uh, and uh, and uh, 400, I'm able to just quickly go from an ambient uh, setting to, um, I'd actually go down one third of a stop from that. So I'm just a shy 3200 here. And I can uh, work with the ambient here. I'll get in a little bit closer. So what we're trying to do is make the most of our timing here with our drinks as they're coming. So we've always got one left over. Just get in nice and tight here. Now, I probably could have opened up a little bit more, but I'm still at 5.6. But yeah, that's nice. That is nice. Just rotate the drink a bit here. Now I'm just going to change my background a little wee bit here. I apologize if I'm not talking enough. Normally I talk a lot when I'm shooting, but uh, I'm concentrating here. And uh, so I'm just trying to get the most, you know, the, a, a good number of looks here out of these drinks as they keep coming out of uh, the bar. So again, I'm not worried about high ISO uh, at all with these cameras. They're, they're very clean files. So again, these are just shy of 3,200. So 
getting a good look here while Paul continues to use the flash at lower ISO. At, uh, ISO 400 again, Paul, yeah. for you? Yeah, okay. So that's good. So uh, I'll move over to the flash shortly on this cocktail. What's this one called, Taylor? Uh, this one's called the White Thorn. Sorry, the White Thorn? Uh, white Thorn. White Thorn. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, it's a take, on a take on a classic cocktail, the Black Thorn, which is mm -hmm. uh, gin, sweet vermouth, and, mm -hmm. um, and Pedro Jimenez Sherry. So he's um, Fino Sherry, uh, White Vermouth, mm. um, and then gin, slow bitters, just to give it up. Yeah, so trying to turn a classic cocktail the opposite color. Huh? So the thorn we want to drink versus step on. Exactly. Ah, very good idea. We don't want to be stepping on thorns. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, good stuff. Now I'm going to go, uh, let's, let's, swap back? let's swap back with flashes. And uh, you can grab, what happened to our, uh, the drink with mint? Oh, it's still there. Yeah, you can yeah, have, have a, so just push yourself up to 3200 with ambient yeah. and go work over there for a sec okay. and I'll work here. Yeah, because it seems to get the best of both worlds. Change whatever you want for props, Paul. Just make anything. Grab. Uh, okay, I'll just get back to 400 here now. Yeah, it's not bad. You can play around with anything. You know, it's just, this is the sort of the way a working photographer is going to go. You know, the drinks keep coming. You've got to get as many looks as possible. You try to make one signature look and sort of work with it. Change your props. Mm. Okay. So, let's get the flash turned on again here. Okay, now let's get this guy. I might want to bring him. I'm going to get. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot this from a little bit higher point of view this time here. Let's see what we can get. Oh, yeah, that's. That's looking nice. I get in tight here. Get back a little bit further. Now the Pro Photo flashes are brilliant to use in this environment. You get a lot of power out of them and they very, very fast cycle time. So just a pleasure to use. Yeah, let's get in nice and tight here. Ah, yes. Now, I might just rotate this. I, I just got a really nice shot on half of the glass here, but it didn't have the garnish in it. Now, what is that garnish? It's a little... Uh, that's a rose petal. It's a rose petal. Okay. So, I want to make sure that rose petal's in. The garnishes are very important on these. So, seems appropriate for something named after a thorn? Mm-hmm. So, I'm sort of working with about three quarters of the glass here for these shoots shots and uh, we've got some nice out of focus uh, highlights here. I might just take my aperture down just a little bit. I'm a little hot here. Let's go there. That's uh... okay. Hang on a sec here. The viewers already asked you for the drinks. <laughs> okay. Just I'm actually just taking the ISO down a little bit as I struggle with this camera. <laughs> Ah, that's nice. Let's get a horizontal shot of that. Orange peel garnish for this guy as well. Ah, excellent. Yeah, yeah, I want to see if I can, hopefully I can get this in. I'm just going to change my ISO a little bit here so I get that flame. Oh, I think I captured our flame. How are we doing here? Play. Oh, that's interesting. I got a bit of flame there. Yeah, it should warm us up. So in that one is a venison fat washed uh, bourbon. Uh, we, uh, render the fat from the venison, uh, wash that through, leave it for 24 hours in the bourbon, then Montenegro, uh, which is an Italian Amaro, mm -hmm. and barrel aged old fashioned bourbon. Oh, yeah. 
I'm sorry. I just we, need, to, need to speak up. Where's the yeah, you got to yell at me. <laughs> so it's a venison fat washed bourbon. So I'm rendered the fat off the venison. Sits for 24 hours, and then a, uh, a Montenegro, which is an Italian amaro, and uh, old fashioned barrel aged bitters. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for that, Taylor. Uh, to our viewers, I, I, we've only running one live microphone, and it's on me. So, uh, and normally I'm the guy who talks too much. So, uh, it's uh, we're. Uh, We've got an awful lot of uh, technology at play here. And as far as microphones go, we're only running one today. I think the next time we do this, we'll probably run multiple microphones and then we'll run a sub mix into that. But uh, again, we're, uh, we're trying to kill a lot of birds with one stone here. And uh, unfortunately, uh, good audio on me is about all we've got. We're lucky we got that because we had a couple of audio mistakes earlier in the broadcast. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're rolling here. I'm going to just pass the flashback. Cool. Oh, here, let's change cameras. Okay, uh, yeah. You go ahead and shoot with that. I'm going to try will. some ambient because I haven't shot with the Hasselblad yet. I'm really beginning to think that you've got the advantage here. Okay. I've been able to get tight in with the Macro. Mm. I'm running into close focus problems with that. Ah, okay. Until Hasselblad actually bring out a Macro. Well, they have one that's announced, correct? It's supposed well, to be... Sure enough, but it's a little way away yet. Ah. You can, of course, use Hasselblad H lenses with an adapter. So there's a perfectly good Macro lens. In the H line, yeah. Yeah. which of course we can use the same lenses on the Fuji as well, because there's an adapter for those same lenses, correct? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should get that in hmm. and have a play. Oh, we certainly will. Yes, yes. Anyway, I'll have a play with this. You go okay, so I'm set up for ambient light here. I've, this will be basically, I think, the first time I've shot with Hasselblad yet. Okay, let's have a little go here. Oh. Okay, oh, viewfinder. Okay, there we go. Now, it's certainly a different viewfinder experience here. I want to just work with the two drinks kind of lined up here. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Yeah, I see what Paul was saying about focus here. I'm struggling. Well, it's a very different experience working with these two cameras. I'm going to bring this other drink in a little bit closer here. Let's see if we can get this leaf. Okay, focus and recompose. Wow. There's no doubt about it. As you're working a bit faster with the Hasselblad, there is a large blackout period in your viewfinder after you press the shutter. Uh, let me just do it again here. I'll just sort of give you an indication and I'll time it. Hang on a sec here. I've got nothing in my viewfinder now. What has happened here? I might need to confer with Paul. I, got, I might have locked up here. I've got nothing in my viewfinder now. And, oh, there oh, we no, are. No, no, no. She's coming back again. Oh, and okay. Just a, bit of a, just a bit of pressure on the trigger will bring it back. Okay. It's, it's a slower thing to work with. Yeah, now. yes. Been, much more deliberate with it. Mm, so. Okay, okay. Let's get back here. I'm going to try to shoot again, get another shot with this. Okay, yeah, so you've got to hold down a little bit. It's good that I'm using this, because like I say, it's my first shot with it. We did an unboxing a couple weeks ago, and uh, Paul did the shooting that day. Now, I've got to try to get this. Yeah, I might be too close for focus. Oh, there we go. There's no doubt about it. From a, a focus point of view, this is a different experience between the uh, Hasselblad and the Fuji. So my uh, first impression here is that um, you've got to work at a much slower pace here with the, uh, with the Hasselblad. The uh, Fuji is just basically ready to roll. Obviously, the end result is the pictures, so we want to make sure that we get brilliant pictures with both here. But yes, a very different experience. Now, I'm a little underexposed on these, but I don't want to change the settings too much here from what Paul already had set up. So let's take a look. How's Paul doing here? So Paul's shooting vertical. Now, do you have a bit of both drinks in the same frame there, Paul? Yeah, that's always fun to work with a little bit of uh, depth per uh, perspective with these drinks. We've got ice here. We've got beautiful glasses. We've got a few background elements. So yeah, we've got, we've got quite a lot to work with. Oh, yeah. Not quite what I want. I think in the setup for the Fuji, we can probably put some grid lines in the viewfinder. I think I would really, my leveling would be better if I had a couple of vertical lines in the viewfinder. Yeah, I just thought that maybe I was the one shooting everything crooked, but both Paul and I are suffering from the same thing here. 
Uh, doesn't matter, you can always level in post-production, but it is nice if you can shoot it level originally. So it's just one of that's those things. Oh, there we go, that's beautiful. Yep. So yeah, we've got some good props here. Let's see, let's bring that in. Now, let me see if I can get something with ambient here as well. Okay, that's not too bad. Hey, now, I might, I might try with flash on the Hasselblad okay, now. Okay. Let's do that. So we'll just swap just that over. Turn this one off. I don't want to be blowing anything up. There we go. You've got to remember, you can't go quite as tight. Yes, yes. Okay, now we need to get our settings back here. So okay. what do we need to change? Okay, let's change the here, I'll hang on to this. Okay, thank you very Paul, much. Paul just going to set us up here with our... Uh, oh, it's nice and warm. Oh, good, yeah. good. Oh, that's nice. We're looking very good, Paul. Yeah. I think we've got to uh, having a lot of fun here. I'm going to just see whether yes, I can get a shot of this thing. Back a bit. There's no doubt about it. The Fuji is a much faster responding camera. Yeah. But for someone who's used to shooting with the digital SLR, it's still a world of difference when it comes to speed. Mm. It's, uh, you know, I just want to quickly grab a shot here. And I'm, uh, there are some things I'm waiting for. So uh, there obviously are some trade-offs. We yeah. get the beautiful high-resolution files, but we've got to work at a little bit slower Just pace a here. slightly slower pace, but that's okay. You could encompass that. That's what we always used mm -hmm. to have to do. So. Now, keep in mind, I just took the, the, took the trigger off here, so I just shot some very <laughs> underexposed pictures. I'm just going to flip up to about 3,200 here and see what we can get just for ambient. But because of those pictures were so underexposed, we might have a fair bit to work with when the time comes. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll see how we're going here. Oh, I just want to confer with David. David, did we go live on the uh, HyperDeck recorder as well for this? Oh, yeah, we're recording. Oh, good, good. All good. Excellent. Okay. Oh, there we go. We're showing David here. So there's the man behind the scenes. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying these live broadcasts. We're working. Oh, that's great. Fabulous. Almost looks like Taylor's getting ready to get into the bottle there. <laughs> here, now let me have a little play with this with the flash. So we're all ready to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you got that. Okay, you're set okay. for some ambient. Maybe yeah. rock back and forth a stop on, on okay. ISO there. But you should try. be able to go. Well, now we've got, we got a set of three drinks here. This is good. We'll play a little depth of field here. Let's uh, see what we've got. Okay, so here we are. We're at uh, uh, 90th of a second at uh, 5.6. ISO's 400. Battery is responding. We're trying to get focus. There we go. Well, I might just throw this guy off to the side. We'll see what we can get a little bit of. Uh... Oh, yeah. So I'm focusing on that. Is it an orange rind we've got on the top of that, Taylor? Yeah, it must be. Let's focus on this orange rind. Got the vertical here. I must admit, I'm struggling with focus a little bit on the Hasselblad. Well, it could be that as well, but also because I'm backlit, it's it's a glass object. These are these are tricky things to focus. You know, I'm not going to try to tell you that using the 35 mil camera with my Canon uh, 85 mil is easy. That thing, you know, for every 10 shots you, you capture, about nine are out of focus anyway. So it's just one of these things. You've got to you learn the equipment, you figure out what you can do here. I just want to see what they're looking like on the back here. John, I'm just going to swap across to an ambient shot that I'm... So that, actually, that's beautiful. That's worked yeah. really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's show them these ones. Okay. So I'm just going to... Yeah, you now, first. now keep in mind, once we get this Facebook, uh, uh, get this shoot all finished here, there. so there's our ambient. Now it's highly backlit, but we, we should be able to do some, some uh, work with it. You want to bring it in a little closer here? Don't worry about talking, Harry. That's, that's all right. All right. Be, be closer. Okay. Be closer. Uh, it's turned off. Yeah. Your screen's okay. turned off. Oh, screen's turned off. off. Okay, yeah, sorry. There you go. Sorry, viewers. <laughs> Beautiful. But we'll share these uh, photos in the comment section because, of course, 
of these Facebook videos have a, have a timeline, mm -hmm. so every photo that we've shot, we can put into the timeline. Yeah, so, and we'll, we'll share some raw files as well. Go the um, ambient. Shot okay, yeah, go, go ahead and explain go that one here. I'll get over to the side here. There we go. Are close enough, Harry? A bit closer, please. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to get back. I really liked what we were working with our framing here. I want to get a couple more shots before I lose, uh, lose our setup. So I'll get horizontal in here. I'm going to pull back as far as I can before I hit the lights here. Now on the Hasselblad, you're certainly not blasting off a whole bunch of rapid fire shots. Your cycle time is, it's looking to me, it's about a second and a half or two seconds between shots is about the best you can get here. I'm gonna get right over, let's see if we can get this flash in the frame of it here. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, I'm very crooked, but uh, we'll see how we go. Let's get one more here, see if we can... I really would like a little guideline while I'm using these things. But anyway, that's all good. I think we'll move the flash over to the Fuji now, and I'll let Paul get to work with a couple of flash, and he can uh, change his frame. Oh, we've got a pink drink coming up here. So I'm turning... Oh, no, I better turn off. There we go. Pop that off. There you go. Okay, I'm just going to have to muffle this a little bit more. Yeah. Now, I want to get my ISO back up here so I can shoot some ambience. Yeah. So I need to get into my settings. What do I do, no, Paul? No, you've actually got a dedicated button just on the top here. Okay. Uh, there's ISO just there. Oh, ISO, okay. So if you uh, just have a press of that. I've got to get it up here. Should, uh, it's taking oh, it's a sec. Might be just having a right to itself. Oh, okay. There we go. A little bit quirky, this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got we the go. display up here. There's there ISO. Go. Okay, there so I'm just going to go up to 3200, and we'll probably be okay for ambient at that. Was that where you yeah, were that's at? What I was using. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to get a couple of shots here. Yeah, so ISO is just over here, just on the, on the yeah, knob. Yeah, no, I've seen that, but it's somebody's... Oh, is it back down? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm, okay. Okay. Keep in mind, uh, like a lot of the videos that we do here, it's a little bit of a trial by fire. Uh, I've got a little bit more mileage on the GFX than Paul, but Paul's got a bit more mileage on the Hasselblad than I. Uh, but again, you know, uh, if you owned these cameras and you had a chance to, you know, use them on several shoots, uh, you'd be in a bit better position than us. But uh, we just kind of wanted to see, could we just pick these cameras up and put them to work? Oh, oh, we got some flaming here, flaming rosemary. Okay, let's get a shot. Get some smoke. I tell you, this is where you really wish you could get a little bit more action out of the Hasselblad. Okay. Oh, I've got a couple. Okay, I'm happy. I don't know if Harry can see that or not, but I've got a bit of flame there. We've got Taylor looking good. Yeah. It does smell good. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant. Well, just put it brilliant. On. Uh, we'll be able to do lots in post production okay. with these. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to just grab a couple of these guys and put them down here to our ambient table. And then we're going to work with. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to move yeah. that around. Let's get this guy here. Some more stuff the yeah, so yeah. Can... Let me see what I can do here while you're doing that. Okay, now I'm just working with ambient here. We've got the blowtorch in this frame. Hopefully that's good. Yeah, go ahead, get in there. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay, that's not too bad. I must admit, I think everything I'm shooting when I'm in vertical mode here is crooked. <laughs> Normally on my cameras, I, uh, I set up some grid lines in the display that really help me. But of course, we're bending over the bar here, and uh, <laughs> this is one of these things. But this is the life of a commercial photographer. You know, you just got to get your hands in there and get dirty. 
Yeah. Okay. Ah, looking good. Yeah, oh, got some like smoke. Nice. The backlight's nice. nice. Backlight. Yeah, let's see if we can show that under the under yeah. the camera here. Looking nice. Good stuff. Okay. Let's get a little shot here of That'll be overexposed most likely, but uh Yep, Okay. Well that's good. Oh, I'm gonna just wanna get a shot here of these guys. Let's Now, one thing I would like, I'm not too sure, Paul, was there an option of a real-time histogram in the viewfinder on the Hasselblad? Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, uh, we'll have to I'd, dive into I'd that. We'll have to be, have a bit of a delve into that. Yeah, I certainly, yeah. I, I've used it on the, on the Fuji, and I do like it. But, uh, yeah, we've got some good stuff here. Let's just get in. I want to just have a little more shoot of this collection here. This is kind of like, uh, uh, we we'll call this the winter cottail flight down here. Uh, uh, just, what, would, what would the, uh, the, it might be a few dollars, though. <laughs> More than three. <laughs> Sorry, John, I've got a question for you. Which one's mine? Ah, well, if uh, you want to start diving in there, uh, get in, uh, Harry. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's a, um, that's a raspberry and uh, green matcha tea cocktail mm -hmm. uh, with white, white rum and, uh, and chartreuse. Sounds and then, excellent. And mm -hmm. yeah, rhubarb, uh, sorry, rosemary on the top just to mm -hmm. give, that, uh, give it that smell of the mm -hmm. aroma that it is. Almost oh, reminds me of juniper. Let me just, yeah, uh, it's um, very, very similar mm. to the uh, aroma that you put. Mm. Yeah, nice. I'm liking the look of what I'm getting with the Hasselblad, but there's no doubt about it. I'm struggling to get the shots off at the rate I need yeah. to for a commercial shoot. It's not as easy to it's work. It's not as easy, no I'm doubt sure about it. They'll develop it with um, firmware upgrades. But uh, at the moment, this is a much more practical solution. I no doubt in my mind. Um, so, yeah. We can't say who the definitive winner is. We need to, you know, the proof is going to be in the pudding. We need to get these files, uh, well, that's true, isn't you know, it? but there's no doubt about it. If you're into a run and gun product shoot, like we presented ourselves, this was our challenge today. You know, how fast can we do this? Can we do it live on video? Uh, from a usability standpoint, the Fuji's doing quite well. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind, if we had to thrown in a top tier uh, Canon digital SLR here, even maybe a 50 megapixel 5D SR type camera, mm -hmm we'd probably be cranking them off even a bit quicker. Now, with that stated, my go-to lens on the Canon format has been this 85 mil that I love, the F1.2, uh, and you always struggle with focus on that. So with the good, the speed of the digital SLRs, the old uh, Canon and Nikons, uh, some of those lenses struggle a little bit. Uh, I'm finding my focusing is very good on the Fuji today. I'm struggling a bit with the Hasselblad. Oh, we got a bit more flame here. I gotta get a shot of this. this is I must admit, though, I'm having a heck of a lot of fun here. I think it was a great idea to come to Whiteheart today to do this shoot. Uh, I, I want to test every one of these cocktails in a non-working environment, or at least a non, you know, working at the store environment today. But uh, Taylor's doing a great job with some mix mastery over here. He's getting quite a workout. He's, uh, he's using every barman's tool that we all dream of. He's got flame flowers. He's got ice, ice machines. He's got strainers. He's got, he's got every, oh, this is good. Let's see if I can get this. You really, it's a bit of a leap of faith on the Hasselblad when you just got to grab that, that, that found moment. Hopefully I've got some here. Okay. <coughs> I, though, I tell you, holding this Hasselblad is incredible. It's so light. Oh, hey, this is good. Let me see if I can get in here. So we've got the template. Come on, focus. There we go. I might be a little overexposed here. Let me get my ISO down. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. I'm probably in your shot there, Paul, but... No, no, you're good. Okay, that's that's fun. Okay, I'm just going to move that one. Yeah. I tell you what, I think it's going to be good here. I don't know. Do you want to stand on a chair, Paul, with that, or I will? Yeah, I know. I'm just thinking a little bit of vertical height could help me. I'm a bit height challenged as usual. A 
We'll let you get one more off there. Just gonna pull that flash back a bit. Okay. Yeah, I haven't touched the flashes. We've just got full manual control over here. Oh yeah. Well, that's a good display. I'm gonna take a shot of that just so I just record that. I've used the Studio Pro Photos quite a bit and these are the battery powered versions. Very, very similar. Okay, let's just do a quick change of battery. Are you changed your battery already? You're back on? Okay, well just pop the new battery in. changing battery on the main sound camera. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I'm going to, I want to get up here. Here, let me uh, trade cameras with you for a sec here. I want to get, I'm going to stand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got lots of heroes. These drinks are heroes, Stephen. <laughs> now, okay. We're good, okay. See how we're doing here. I just kind of wanted to get high up here to get a shot. I need a little bit more ISO on that just to get, uh, let's go up to 800 a bit here. I might just, I'm just going to change my positioning here. Let's get that. I'm going to put him over here a little bit. You feel free to snap off some ambience there. Yeah, okay. And you should be good to go, Paul. Let me just get this as a background element here and uh, If I was to use a bit of citrus, Taylor is an element here, would I go lime or would I go lemon? Uh, you'd go lemon for that. Lemon? Yeah, in fact, a um, bit of apple would Oh, let's put an apple, apple beside here then. Our, That's good. There. Apple is one of the main yeah, components right. of that little guy. Perfect. Okay. This, um, I'll sort of yell into the microphone a bit. Yeah, well, you can just yell at me. Well, you can so scream at me if you want. Oh, I would never do that to you, mate. So this hey, one's a, um, a dark walnut apple and uh, some broccoli sour. It's got an apple juice, lemon, uh, lemon juice. Um, dark walnut bitters, which is the, the, uh, the white heart W you see on the top there. And uh, Calvados. Okay, how are we doing here on these shots? Oh, I'd really like to get... I'm blocking most of that. I'm going to crank up my ISO a little bit more here and get that. Ah, oh, that's good, that's good, okay. So I've had to create my ISO up a little bit here because I'm kind of blocking a lot of the soft box, but now I'm going to go vertical. And I like my framing. I just want to work with that W, the uh, white heart W that's on the, uh, oh, on the middle of that. And there we go. That's not too bad. I might want to just change our Apple location. Let's just rotate this. The Fuji, oh, that definitely, that's good. Now I get it a little bit tighter here. I like my framing, but I just want to get that edge out of the picture here. Okay, there we go. So that's what I, the reason I wanted to stand up there is I wanted to really work with the top of this drink. So that's what we're getting. We've got apple in it. I'm just working with the, uh, the stap, stap, <laughs> stacked napkins here. And there's our cocktail. So I think we've got ourselves a nice shot with that. Now, I might want to hand the camera back to Paul. He can work with the Fuji a little wee bit. Keep going flash here. Go. I'm going to go ambient. I think okay. really we sort of figured it out. The Fuji and flash is a good combo, and maybe the Hasselblad yeah. for ambient. Nice work. Yeah, right? yeah. Let me just, uh, I'll just pull your chair back up. Yeah, yeah. Don't call the work safe people. <laughs> we won't tell them. We won't tell them that we're standing on a chair. <laughs> he was standing on a chair. Oh, no! <laughs> there we go. Now, I cranked the ISO up a little bit because I was losing light because I was blocking most oh, of that. So okay. you might want to take her back down to, to um, 400 and change or whatever. But that's what's the nice thing. The, uh, the Fuji has got direct access to your key parameters, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So from a pure manual shooting point of view, it's a very pleasurable camera to work with. I might just sort of work over here a little bit. I've got uh, 
David's got our uh, B-roll camera here. He's just reframing. Careful, oh, Harry's lost a little bit of, uh, of uh, gaffer tape on his wire, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm just going to shoot into here a little bit. I want to get this a uh, couple of ambient shots of these cocktails. Just There we go. Okay. I should be talking while I'm doing this, but I'm kind of concentrating on this camera. I must admit, I just love the feel of the Hasselblad in my hand. It's a, it's a very, very comfortable body. The uh, weight is nice. All you wish for is just faster response. So let's hope that Hasselblad can do a firmware update on this or in its next iteration, it can be the performance demon that we just, we really want. There is a, it's a, it's a real tough comparison between the Fuji and the Hasselblad because the Fuji just is such a fast performer. Yeah, I'm just going to bring this in. Keep in mind, we're spoiled these days in the digital age because, of course, we're used to just, you know, blasting these things off like a machine gun. If this was film, uh, maybe medium format, you know, we'd be winding this thing. We'd be, uh, you know, staging everything. We'd only get like 12 or so shots on a roll. So, and of course, we wouldn't get to see the results until we actually went back uh, to the lab. Uh, so take another hour or so, or maybe our own darkroom. We might have been using... Uh, Polaroid backs to get proofs. It's like our skyscraper of drink shot here. This would be kind of fun. Come on, focus for me. There we go. Come on. Minimum focusing distance. I'm struggling here. I want to get in tighter, but I just can't. It's not a macro lens. It's an unfair comparison uh, for, for the Hasselblad versus the Fuji because we do have that uh, beautiful 100 and, um, 120 mil macro, right? Yes. Right, yeah. yeah. I want to see if I can shoot up a little bit here. Come on, focus, please, please focus. There we go, okay. Have we uh, gone through the complete list? Okay, well, I think maybe Paul and I should just sort of have a little bit of a roundup here. Well, uh, you want to have a seat, Paul? Yeah, sure. You come over here. Let's uh, have a little talk about what we've... What... I think we could. I think we could. I must admit, I'm rather drawn to this. I'm going to have a little taste. What... Uh, 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 that goes um, to a Tokyo City sour. So it's a take on a New York sour. But, um, oh. Using a, um, using a brown sugar and meshu, along with a rye whiskey and then um, red wine or Pinot Noir flavor. Well, that's got most of my favorite food groups in it. What? Alcohol, alcohol and booze? Well, in yeah, New, yeah. New York, and I need to go to Tokyo. Paul spent some time in Tokyo, and I've spent some time in New York. And what have, what have we got in this one? Uh, so that one is a uh, raspberry matcha tea, um, white rum, and green chartreuse. Hmm. And, then, um, and then obviously with the, uh, with the rosemary and lemon juice. Okay, well... Uh, 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 topped with ginger beer. Now, where's Steven? Steven, do you want to join us? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Everything's good. Okay. So I have a little taste here. You have to say it's good. It? No, it's hey, really listen. Nice, listen, that's fantastic. Mm. <laughs> well, this is the reason why sometimes being a professional photographer is fun. You know, you get to sample the wares. Mm. And uh, I think we've uh, had uh, some great support with the staff here at Whiteheart. Um, it's been a uh, real job to get all this technology moved, even though it's just from next door. Uh, Dave has done a wonderful job on uh, handling our video switching. We hope you've had a chance to join us here on Facebook Live for our first photo shoot shootout. And it was cocktail photography, Hasselblad uh, X1D50C versus... Uh, GFX 50S. 50S. And they're both 50 because of their megapixels. And love and it or hate it, sensor size, sensor size uh, everything in cameras is still marketed on the megapixels. We're, of course, over here at Whiteheart Bar, which is right beside on Lonsdale Street off Whiteheart Lane beside Michael's camera. So uh, we think it's a match made in heaven. We've got uh, artisan cocktails and uh, beers and uh, friendly staff, a beautiful architectural masterpiece of steel and containers. Uh, uh, there's, there's some art on the brick walls. Sometimes there's projectors going. Uh, Whiteheart's a heck of a fun place. And every week or so, there's a different food truck here. And uh, what, what we've got, uh, what, was the, what was the food truck we've got in right now? It's barbecue again, is it? I can't remember. Anyway, I, I, yeah. I think it's barbecue. Um, 
So uh, we, we really love having Whiteheart right next to Michael's camera. Uh, the staff comes over here. It's uh, our local. Yeah. So now let's get into what we've learned with the, uh, with the cameras today. Oh, I really thought you were saying let's get into the cocktails. Oh, well, yeah, we've no, got to get into those no, as well. No. Right off the bat, the feel in the hand of this Hasselblad is incredible. Mm -hmm. This is a camera you just want to shoot and shoot and shoot with. However, it lets you down because you can't shoot and shoot and shoot because it's just not performing that fast. It's a, it's a difficult unit to love because it's beautiful. The weight is great. I'm sure the pictures are going to be fabulous. Uh, we know they should be. Uh, I've had a little test with our original box opening day. Uh, Paul took a picture of me. I think it was the first one on this camera. Yeah, or or it might have been a picture of Matt. Yeah. I can't remember. But anyway, anyway. Hmm. the pictures are very good. Uh, oh, we're just going to hopefully... Uh, Steven, are you going to join us? Hi. Feel free. Come on here. Grab a drink. Yeah, <laughs> well, it went now, but yeah, all, all went well, John. I think it went very well. This is uh, Stephen, uh, the uh, proprietor here at Whiteheart. Which camera and are we on, Dave? Camera one. Oh, we're on camera right. one. Okay. And um, yeah, so Stephen so uh, graciously uh, let us come over here, uh, shoot his drinks, uh, partake uh, in his environment, mm -hmm. and let us do a live broadcast. So we Fantastic. really thank you for that. Very welcome. Very welcome. And, and uh, um, yep, yeah, absolutely. So you've seen the team behind the scenes here. We've got the bit of the, the white hearters over here. Going oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll take a shot. We're all standing by. Let's, uh, you better just change, quickly change the ISO here while I take Legendary a shot. Crew. That's, uh, yeah, there they all are. Hi there. And uh, funny, isn't this a director, David? <laughs> Fantastic. There is right. the team. So, so got it in the bag. In yes, the well, we're just going to give a little bit more of a roundup of our cameras. So uh, I've, um, well, yeah, one of the cameras. Camera two. Camera two. So... We've had no problem using the Hasselblad with the flash system. The Profoto lights have been working perfectly. I don't think we had a misfire at all. We just ran them in manual mode. Matter of fact, the whole shoot basically was in manual mode. It's the way most pros work with this. We were using the autofocus, of course, though. And there's no doubt about it, because this is not a macro lens. I was struggling a bit with autofocus. I think the autofocus performance possibly on this camera, not quite up to the standard on the Fuji as well. Uh, proof will be in the pudding when we take a look at the images. Now, Paul, let's give me, give me your rundown. How are you feeling about the Fuji? Oh, well, I just found this an amazingly easy camera to use, certainly in comparison to that, I'm afraid. As much as I want to love this thing, ergonomically, and the build and everything is just beautiful. Um, yeah, practically, this was a much better thing to use. So, I mean, especially, I mean, as we were saying before, you've got a decisive advantage in having a macro in this setting because you want to get tied in on things and get that nice selective focus. So that just works perfectly. And the whole way the camera works, the autofocus, everything very responsive, works beautifully with the flash, easy to use. So really, I'm really happy with this. I yeah, think really if, nice. uh, if I had these two cameras sitting in front of me and it, wasn't, it was just me working alone, I had the choice, I think I would have uh, shot the whole shoot on the Fuji. Mm. I, just, I just struggled to use the Hasselblad today. Uh, I'm sure the pictures are going to be beautiful, but I struggled with it. And um, I still think that in a different sort of setting, if you are traveling or you're doing landscape work or something like that, this would still be a really nice camera to use. Oh, I, no doubt in my mind. And of course, take a look at the size. Yeah, yeah exactly. We just hold this up. Now, of course, we've added a few options here. Mm. We don't need to have the grip on the Fuji. And of course, we do have a macro lens, which is a little bit larger. But uh, yes, this camera... This is the beginning. Let's think of this as maybe, you know, the beta. Obviously, they don't want us to think of that, but I think in the next iteration of this Hasselblad is going to be a very brilliant camera. But for the, if you were shooting with the Hasselblad as if it was film, I know it's digital, but if you had the film mentality, you were working very slow and methodical, I think that the Hasselblad is not going to let you down. But for what we were doing today, where we were on a timeline and we needed to get these shots, uh, I just cycle to cycle time. I struggled with the Hasselblad and I didn't struggle with the Fuji. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's where I stand on it. And I think, you know, you basically... No, I absolutely agree with yeah. that. Yeah. I'm really itching to get these uh, files out of the cameras into the computer and we're going to share them with you. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to share some RAW files as well so that you can uh, pop them into Lightroom and have a play. Uh, both cameras, RAW files, work with Lightroom, uh, so you've got no problem there. And uh, of course, uh, these cameras can produce an in-camera JPEG for reference uh, purposes as well. So uh, yeah, thank you for joining us on this, uh, our first live shootout. Uh, not only is it a live shootout of a couple of very exciting medium format mirrorless cameras, uh, 
It's a remote shootout because we're over at White Hart Bar, which is beside Michael's camera, but keep in mind, we had to move everything from the store over to here. And of course, we're using a multi-camera broadcasting system uh, going to Facebook Live, all thanks to the Black Magic devices. So we're using the Black Magic web presenter to produce our stream. We're using the Black Magic HyperDeck to record this, so we have a full HD recording of the stream. And then, of course, we're using the Black Magic uh, ATEM TV Studio to do the switching. And as we grow with this system, we're going to be adding more cameras. Today, we're running two cameras for the feed. We've got Harry over here on a 5D Mark IV with a 24 to 105 IS lens. Yep. And the uh, 5D Mark IV's dual pixel autofocus has been doing a great job. That camera's got the wireless mic hooked up to it. And of course, we only ran one mic today, so I do apologize. I know we kind of struggled with audio. We're going to have to get more wireless mics in next time. But, um, and then of course the second camera was a little Panasonic Lumix G7, which also runs uh, full HD streaming out of its HDMI port. And uh, so that was what enabled us to do a, a, a two pixel, or sorry, a two camera, not a two pixel, a two camera live stream. And David was over here uh, manning the computer and uh, handling our switching and directing us. And uh, of course directing us was a real challenge because of course we were just meandering all over the place as we were doing the shoot. But uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we hope uh, to uh, share all of our results and we hope to see you at Whiteheart and at Michael's Camera. And uh, I think it's the best of both worlds. We've got beautiful winter cocktails here at Whiteheart. And of course we've got all sorts of cameras and uh, things for you to purchase and just view over at Michael's. So we're gonna sign off now and thank you so much for joining us. Big hand to everybody at Whiteheart. Uh, big hand to Taylor for uh, getting all of our drinks ready. And uh, thanks, Taylor. Big hand up to Taylor. And uh, thanks to Stephen for having us over here. And a big thanks to Michael's camera for letting us uh, take our uh, photo shootout on the road over to Whiteheart. So take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye.